Every time you drive your car, there's a chance that things will go horribly wrong. Our vehicles are made up of thousands of parts that work together to keep us safe. And with that comes thousands of opportunities for something to malfunction. Some of these defects are relatively harmless and could go unnoticed for years. But others could kill you in an instant. Here's how to survive the top five worst car failures. Although most car accidents occur due to decisions made by drivers, mechanical failure is still a common cause of crashes. Millions of people drive vehicles every day. Sometimes they are so used to taking their usual route that they forget they're controlling a two to three ton potential killing machine. And the first step to preventing a tragedy is knowing what the most deadly mechanical failures are and how to react to them. Which car failure causes the most accidents? What should you do if your steering wheel stops working? And when would hitting the brakes be a bad idea? Today we'll be counting down the top five worst car failures and giving you tips on how to survive them. So the next time you're barreling down the freeway at 100 kilometers per hour and something doesn't feel right, you'll know just what to do. Number five, visibility problems. Imagine driving on a dark road during a freezing winter night. The last thing you want is your headlights or windshield wipers to fail. Your headlights might fail because of wiring problems or the light bulbs might just die. And the windshield could freeze or it could be cracked by a rock or hail hitting it. If this happens, slow down immediately and turn on your hazard lights. If your hazard lights don't work, roll down your window and wave your arms to let people know something is wrong. If the rest of your car is working fine, you should be able to get off the road and stop. Look for a place with street lights so people don't ram into your car in the dark. Sometimes car windows can fog up and the defroster may not work. In this case, roll down your windows to equalize the temperature and moisture inside and outside the car. Number four, engine failure. Oil and filter issues or problems with the catalytic converter can cause your car's engine to fail. They could cause your car to shut off while you're driving. It could also prevent your car from starting. If the engine shuts off suddenly, coast to the shoulder of the road with your hazard lights on. Then try restarting the car after it has come to a full stop. But if you're having severe issues, such as a smoking engine or your car suddenly catches fire, you need to pull over, get out of the car ASAP and run away. Once you're a safe distance away from the vehicle, call for help. Number three, steering and suspension issues. A lack of power steering fluid can lead to a jammed steering wheel. If the steering wheel locks up, slow down and stop as quickly as possible and try to avoid hitting anything or anyone. Do your best to stay away from other vehicles and call a towing service. The good news is that steering issues are usually not that extreme. If you feel your car pulling slightly toward one side, it's time to visit a mechanic. Number two, brake failure. The brake pads overheating or wearing out, lack of hydraulic brake fluid, or lack of maintenance can cause brakes to fail. You'll need to slow the car down as soon as you realize your brakes have failed, so take your foot off the gas. If you can, turn on the hazards and try pumping the brake pedal quickly. To stop, try pulling your emergency brake, but do it slowly since pulling the emergency brake quickly might cause your tires to lock and make your car spin. In 2013 in Grandale, California, an elderly driver and his wife were enjoying a relaxing Sunday drive when his Cadillac's brakes failed. They were going downhill and couldn't make a turn. The car became airborne. It landed on the roof of a neighbor's house and was stuck there. The neighbors brought a ladder and the couple climbed down off the house. Luckily, nobody was hurt. The car certainly took a beating, but the roof only had minor damage. Number one, tire blowout. In 2015, a U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration study reported that mechanical failures caused about 44,000 vehicle crashes between 2005 and 2007. Tire problems caused about 35% of the crashes and brake failures caused about 22% of the accidents. If the air pressure inside a vehicle's tire is not correct, it can cause the tire to burst. If your tires are worn out, old, unstable, or get too hot, it can cause a blowout and carrying too much weight in your vehicle can put your tires at risk of blowing out. Once a tire blows out, you'll feel the car pull to the side, so hold on tight to the steering wheel. 
Imagine your wheel is a claw. Keep your hands at the 2 and 10 positions. Don't slam on the brakes or you might lose control. Instead, keep pressing the gas pedal lightly to keep the forward momentum. Once you are in control again, you can take your foot off the gas pedal. If you're moving slowly enough, are in control of the car, and are close to the road shoulder, you can try driving onto the shoulder. If your car is under control and you need to slow down, press the brake pedal gently. Never ignore problems or sounds your car makes. Change the oil and do routine maintenance on time, and don't keep driving if you know your car is malfunctioning. You managed to avoid a serious collision this time, but next time, you might not be so lucky. Do you know how many people die from auto collisions every year? If you want to find out, keep watching here on How to Survive.